Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel. And welcome back if you've been here before. So today is box opening day on the kit of the week. The kit, of course, being the mighty Blackburn Buccaneer S2 C and D in 148 scale from Ethics. Now normally I'd say I'll have a look at the history of the kit. I can't because it is an absolutely brand new tooling. Um, I've had it a few days now. I was very excited about building this, but I'll have a quick look at what else Airfix done with Buccaneers and other companies have done with the Buccaneer over the years. Then I'll have a look at what you get inside the box, colour schemes, um, have a look at the plastic, see what sprues are there, see what details are there. This kit has been made possible by the very generous donations of the following people. Their names are appearing on the screen there in front of you. These are people who have given money either through uh, Patreon or Buy Me A Coffee or Kofi or Super Thanks or they have purchased products from my partner channels. Without them, this kit would not be possible. Now, if you'd like to join the ranks of that elite, the ranks of those mighty, then all you have to do is click on one of the links in the information box below. If you would just like to say, that's a great video, Gary, give it a thumbs up and the like button down there. And of course, most importantly, do please remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, enough of all of that. Let's get on and have a look at this amazing kit of the Blackburn Buccaneer in 148 scale from FX. FX has released a 148 scale kit of the Buccaneer previously as the RAF S2B version in 1994, the Naval S2C&D version in 1996, and finally again in 2005. In 172nd scale, FX had a new tool release in 2019, a very fine kit indeed, which came out in RAF colours the following year. Previously, Airfix had released a 172nd kit of the S2 Buccaneer in 1989, which went through many reboxings with occasional new parts until the last outing in 2010. Other companies making kits in 172nd were Frog with their 1972 tooling, Matchbox with their 1974 tooling that was also sold by Revel, and Czech Master Resin, who made a range of versions from 2006 to 2013. Tamiya made a kit in the slightly odd 1 100th scale in 1971 and this kit was also sold by Revel. There have been smaller kits still from 144th.co.uk out appropriately enough 1 144th scale and there's even some Buccaneers available as part of an HMS Arc Royal set in 1 700th from Starling models they seem from 2018. But for the real Buccaneer fan, there's always the 132nd scale kit by Aerodynamics, made in 1995, if, and it's a really big if, if you can find one. The only kits of the earlier S1 version of the Buccaneer were made by Scale Resin from 2016, and in a frankly awful Airfix kit made first in 1960, before the Buccaneer was even named. These kits do turn up from time to time on auction sites, but do be aware these are more like self-assembly toys than they are proper models. Do you know, this kit is so big I can't even use my, my usual workbench to open it up. So anyway, here it is, a beautiful box art as usual these days, really evocative of a buccaneer getting quite angry with someone about to make their day go not very well. Inside the box we have quite a lot of bags of plastic parts. We'll go through all the sprues in a bit, but uh, the, the clear ones are here. There's one, two, three sprues in here. Um, another bag here, this looks like all the Weapons, bombs and missiles and stuff like that. Um, flying surfaces are here. Then there's the main structures, nose, tail, engine bays and all that. And of course the fuselage top and bottom and the tail as well. And the front end. 
All very good. There's an awful lot of plastic there, as I did mention in their uh, talk to us. There's a lot of cellophane still there, or, or polythene, or whatever it is they use. There's a lot of plastic that they maybe could be looking to replace with something a bit better. Um, here's the instruction booklet. Um, this, this really does feel quite chunky. There's quite a lot in there. There's a lot of options as well, which is quite cool. There's the decal and colour layouts. Um, colour layouts, let's be honest, it's not going to be great because it's all extra dark sea grey. But there's bits and pieces, you know, radar, uh, radar warning receiver fins and bits of electronics and stuff like that, missiles, whatever. All the decal placements are there as well. There's four schemes all together. As I mentioned before, we'll go through all of these a bit later. Um, bombs and whatever. Then there is the stencil layout sheet. Now it's being a bigger kit, it's got a few more stencils to worry about, but not that many, it's not completely crazy. Um, stencils for the uh, FOD covers for the engines as well, which I really like, really, really like the fact they've done those. And then this enormous sheet of decals. This is a good 30 centimeters or so long, a foot long, in this direction, um, plenty of choice of decals, absolutely wonderful. I'm not sure yet what version I'm going to go for, whether it's the early 809 or the late 809. The late 809 is the one with the Martel missiles, I think. Early ones, uh, the, you, you get the prettier roundels. I don't know. I'll think about that and see which one I'm going to do. That's what you get in the box. We'll have a closer look at all of these things now. Right, here we start with sprue A, which has got the uh, fuselage tail, the nose section, open air brakes if you want them, air intakes, and of course, the cockpit. Um, the moulding looks really nice. Oh, there's the exhaust as well. Uh, Mouldings look good. You know it's sprue A because of this massive great big A moulded into it. Very, very clear. By the way, here is the recycle logo saying, this is a type six polystyrene. If your local authority recycles it, then you can recycle. Very good. You can see the quality of the parts as well. You can see the delicacy of the, some of these moldings, some of these rivet lines on this tail, really quite exquisite. I really, really hope I'm good enough to be able to bring those out because they certainly deserve it. The level of detail is just lovely. It really is. In the bomb bay as well, of course in this one, Unlike the 72nd scale, they provide enough bombs to go in, which is really good. Anyway, that's sprue A. And then we have sprue B. This is all the engine parts, um, engine fans and turbines. You've got an open engine option on the port side, I believe it is. So there's an engine here. You've got the open and closed tail cones for the air brakes. Um, there's two versions, the later ones had different sort of electronics and stuff like that on them. So that's Sprue B. Oh, and two crew members, Sprue B. On to Sprue C, and these are the wings, the tailplane sections, the uh, elevators, and the flaps and ailerons, and the mechanism for having the brakes open. These parts are here, if you're not having the folded wings, if you're having the wings out, then these support the outer wing sections. Um, these are f the pieces you need if you are having the wings folded. These support the outer wing sections on here. Again, all looks very nice or beautifully detailed. I have to say beautifully detailed. And um, yeah, looking forward to building this increasingly as I look at all the parts. Sprue D here, um, fuel tanks, Martel missiles, thousand pound bombs, um, no rocket packs on this one, so thousand pound bombs and the Martel missiles and the fuel tanks and the pylons for them. Okay, sprue E, and this is where the two rocket packs are that I was uh, concerned about. Bombay door, the hook and bumper housing, uh, slipper tanks here. Sprue G. Now, um, undercarriage uh, weighted, to actually weighted and slightly bulged tyres, which is a nice touch. Uh, gear doors, the ejection seats with the ejection seat initiators up at the top, all of the 
instrument panels and interiors for the cockpit as well. And Sprue H, um, all that external accessory pieces really, there's uh, bomb racks in here, um, ECM and countermeasures pods, the uh, FOD covers for the engines, crew um, ladders, which are fantastic. Um, such a lot of attention to detail, the, the hook. All these, these bits are for the interior of the Bombay. Um, here's the, the nose wheel door, and there's a mask for the nose wheel. So if you're having the door open, um, but you're spraying the kit, you can use the mask to protect the inside of the bay whilst you do it, and then put it on later. What a nice touch. I saw that on the Mosquito, which I think Paramjit also designed. So, you know, there's a proper modeler at Airfix solving modeler's problems because he knows what they are, which is fantastic. And that just leaves the transparency sprue, which actually comes in two plastic bags. Now, I, I guess that's just to protect the, the clear plastic even more because they're true you don't don't want want scratched transparencies but it does seem a little excessive anyway this is sprue i i i for india now there's some very nice touches obviously there's um the ends of the wings like in the 70 second either the um they have this sort of slightly larger outwash wings or the flush wing tips Lots of various lights and stuff like that. Couple of tips for the TV guided Martels. Two canopies and two windscreens. Why two of each? Well, the windscreens, I think you can just about see. This one has the uh, windscreen wiper molded on. This one doesn't. You get both just in case, according to Paramjit, you buy an aftermarket windscreen wiper. Then you don't have to try and sand this one off the transparency, which you'll never be able to do properly. So they provide both which is very thoughtful likewise i don't know if we better see these but we'll try on this one we have molded the miniature destination cords mdc lines you can see that's like sort of wavy patterns these are like the explosives that when you initiate the ejection seat just blast a hole in the canopy um, on this one there aren't any because again Sometimes you can get these as decals. Sometimes you can even get them as very small photo etch to put in to make it look more accurate. But there you go. Even on this, you're getting some really interesting options, which I think is fantastic. Now, what you don't get in the kit, and I've looked twice and then three times, is a sprue F, F for Foxtrot. So already we know there's going to be another Buccaneer kit. On it will be a sprue F, and who knows what that will be. Um, possibly a bit too much to hope it will be for the S1 Buccaneer. I think there's just too much conversion that you'd need to make. But um, who knows what, what type of Buccaneer South African Royal Air Force ones. Maybe there's, there's some difference with um, later things like uh, ECM pods and laser designators, for example, for a Gulf War, War version and paveway bombs or whatever. Anyway, there isn't a Sprue F, so therefore there is going to be more than one version of this kit. Right, looking at the instruction sheet then, it's quite a lot in it, and it's got some nice touches. Right, so right away, the first thing you have is like, these are the four schemes. These are the suggested weapons and pylon loads for those schemes, so you know which bits you're building later on and which bits you've got to drill out and stuff like that. So that's a nice start. Um, a little restrictive, perhaps, I don't know. Could they fly with more than four 1,000 pounders? Pretty sure they could, but I'm not certain. Anyway, um, this will then show you for each scheme all the different options, where they go, what you need to uh, drill out, and how big they are. Okay. Another new thing for this kit, the internal decals. So all of the things like the ones on the seats, all the things on the control panels, instrument panels, have their own page where they're much larger, much more straightforward, more obvious where everything goes, which is excellent, I have to say. And then the instructions. Um, as usual with Airfix these days, very, very good, very straightforward, very clear. I, I still love this red highlighting of you have just done this and 
that's where it goes and stuff like that lovely here indeed is that nose cone 15 grams needs to go into the nose cone weight holder and it closes up completely so if you're using something like i don't know liquid gravity or something like one of these really fluid things you've got a self-contained pot there to hold all the weights um, options here for fitting the crew ladders which i love that they've included those here i mentioned earlier oh you've got mask oh that's the cover for the engine so if you do all the engine do all the painting for the engine then you're going to spray the kit put the mask on top then you don't spray your engine extra dark sea gray result what a good result and there we go all the rest of it again there's more masks there's options 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 things you can do um the tail this time the tail comes with elevators you can position as well which is a nice touch there is so much to this kit there really is so much to it again wiperless and wipers very good anyway we will go through all of these things one by one this is what mine's going to look like except it's also going to have an engine open and it's going to have the um, the air brakes open at the back and there's going to be some weapons on it but it's definitely a wing folded partly because i think i need to show the wing fold but partly because i've got the room for one with its wings open scheme a is for the s2d buccaneer 809 naval air squadron on hms arc royal in 1978 this is the one with the martel missiles scheme b is considerably older 1969 hms hermes 801 naval air squadron scheme c is again for 809 naval air squadron operating from rnas lossy mouth in scotland in 1970 not sure why it wasn't on arc royal at the time maybe the arc was undergoing some work and they went ashore to lossy mouth um probably maritime strike roll i would guess from up there and finally scheme d another s2c another rnas lossy mouth in scotland this time 1969 carrying bombs internally this one is from 803 naval air squadron the stencil sheets and there are a few more stencils on this compared to the 172nd but it's not crazy it's not like a, an f4 or something there's not every single panel has to have a notice saying do not open this panel or whatever so there's some stencils which is going to make this look really nice but not too many um, obviously there's stencils on the fod covers for the engines which i love um, loads more on bits and pieces like the undercarriage you've got tiny little things on them otherwise very straightforward very simple shouldn't be too much of a problem and then the decal sheet printed by cartograph of course there's a lot of common stencils although common markings when you've got options for roundels with and without the white seems a bit of a strange thing but a strange definition of common and it's common to some schemes not to others anyway those like the basic ones i guess there's the uh rings for the bombs as well the like the yellow live round rings as well um other than that as i say not masses not millions enough to give you some decent detail then you have these squadron specific markings there's uh the a scheme over here of 809 naval air squadron then the b scheme of 801 from hms hermes the C scheme from 809 again but the early markings in 1970 at Lossy Mouth hence the LM badge on top of their Phoenix logo 803 squadron with the uh, Lossy Mouth logo as well because they were based there in 69 for some reason these uh, squadron crests are separated out no idea why that is um, and an interesting thing on here, well, two interesting things. Firstly, is that they have put the seat belts and harnesses on this decal sheet. So you're supposed to put these decals onto some sort of thickish foil and then cut them out and use that to lay over. I'll give it a go. I'll, I'll see if it works. I'm not not 100% sure I'll be able to do it, but I'll give it a go. The other thing is, as on the um, 72nd scale Buccaneer, you'll notice that the, un the underwing serials go over the wing fold line, so they have 
very kindly produced little marks to show you where to cut the underwing serial so it sits on the fold line correctly which is a very very good touch very thoughtful touch um, colors generally speaking you know they're cartographed the colors look great the pale blue of the markings of the serials and all that has that very very slight sort of lilac -y look to it which is what they did the colors on the roundels are spot on the yellow is nice and vibrant and rich um, really good really really good colors and of course as usual the registration is absolutely perfect I mean properly pin sharp registration there it is then the 148 scale Blackburn Buccaneer from Airfix the brand new tooling very very excited about this build if you've enjoyed this video please do remember to let me know by giving it a click on the like button the thumbs up like button down there and as I've mentioned before, please do remember to subscribe to the channel. All we have to do is click on that small logo down there in the bottom right. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps me enormously. In any case, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.